Donald Trump is apparently still trying to fill out his legal team to build a defense in a case that, as we have said many times, but it bears repeating, is without precedent. Yes, because he's a former president and current frontrunner for the nomination, but also because there has never been a defendant with the social media following and influence he has and who has been, in effect, trying to build his defense in the court of public opinion. Of course, those claims have arguably flown in the face of the law, of known reporting, and the detailed indictment against him. But there are also some early clues as to what his lawyers may argue in court. Joining us now to look at the potential lines of defense, NBC News legal analyst Danny Savalos. Danny, if we can start where we left off, which is how long this might take, actually. We have here somebody who thinks it could happen before the election. Mm -hmm. Chuck Rosenberg said it's far, far off in the future. How does this play into the defense? I think both are right. I think it's farther <laughs> off in the future than the 70-day Speedy Trial uh, Act because no there are going docket. to be... What there is, well, yes, federal court is the rocket docket. It's the original rocket docket. It's the place where if you're a defense attorney and you say, Judge, I need some more time. Can we, can we get a new date? The judge will give you two weeks, and you should be glad you got two weeks. So federal court is not a place where you can play the delay game. That being said, there's never been a case like this before. The mere matter of getting Donald Trump into the courthouse is something that takes weeks to even plan, and probably an arraignment like today, we'll see, it's going to take longer than your typical arraignment, which is normally a matter of minutes. So my rule of thumb with a case like this is take whatever the projection is and add another third when it comes to time, because there are going to be unanticipated things that come up, especially with Donald Trump and his defense team style. They're going to file motions. Those motions will require more time. Uh, and if they're dispositive motions, in other words, motions to throw the case out, that could add to it. There are going to be unexpected things that happen. So whether or not this case makes it before the election, I think is an open question, but I wouldn't be surprised if this case is tried in 2024. So we were looking at Doral, where the president is right now, and just a, an aside for you, that, that ballroom with his name on top, Trump, that is where he said, Russia, if you're listening. Just thought, I thought I'd let you know that. Um, Katie was there for I was there for that. that. I was there. It was, it was bringing back a lot of memories. Um, Evan Corcoran's notes. It appears the prosecutors have them. How... How harmful is that to have a lawyer's notes? Is there a way for the defense to say you have no right to those notes and get them thrown out? They're unbelievably harmful. It's never happened in a case of mine. It's something that I've uh, only rarely even heard of, mostly in theory. But the idea that the government was able to pierce the attorney-client privilege and the work product and obtain this information, if it's admissible, it could be devastating. Why would it not be admissible? There are a number of different reasons why the defense might fight to make it to argue that this, is, this evidence is somehow not admissible. A, a, just a simple example might be hearsay. But there are so many exceptions to the hearsay rule that they swallow the rule itself. I'm just pulling at strings here, guessing what they might try. Because that's your role as a defense attorney. Look, federal prosecutors investigate cases and they don't bring them to a grand jury until they're sure they're airtight. A defense attorney's job, we don't get to pick our facts. We are given the facts that are in the indictment. And so some of our defenses are born of creativity. They're also born of desperation. You try anything you can. You hope to make a record. You hope, even if you lose at this level, you hope that an appellate court might look at it a different way. And by the way, the odds are against us. We're probably going to lose, but at least we made the argument and we tried. Because if you don't try, you don't know. Danny, what about the fact that these are classified documents? The intelligence community obviously doesn't want to see them in open court. They've most likely curated these in consult consulting with the intelligence community as to what 31 they could pick to be used or which defense documents they could use. But can you, as a defense attorney, insist that they be shown to the jury, be shown to the, to the public? and try to slow walk it that way. Because yeah, exactly. then every one of those documents can be argued over. Remember when we were talking about things that could come up that could delay this case? Right there is an issue uh, that is not exactly unprecedented, but it's an issue that's often handled up north in the District of the District of Columbia. This court can handle these issues. It doesn't handle them as often. But you can expect that's exactly the kind of thing, through motion practice, that could add weeks, if not months, 
to this time schedule. So they're going to have to come up with a system of how to handle it. If you're the defense, you have to make a decision. Do you really want the optics of filing a motion to say, hey, judge, we want all of these national secrets to come into evidence in open court? That might not be a great idea. But look, if you think it furthers the defense and you think it's within the bounds of ethics, you're almost duty bound to do it, even knowing that you likely will lose.